بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد The truth is a painful surgery which cures whilst deception is an instant relief painkiller which kills So low the truth may be hard to digest may be difficult to swallow but Haq is like a person who's on the operating table. The surgery is there to make him, not to slice him. While deception and doka and evil comes in a form of a pain reliever, a painkiller, which seems beneficial outwardly, but inwardly it has its side effects. So we should not be caught up in this trap. When I hear haq, when I hear ibayan, when I hear advice, when some statements are said, and if it's true, and the shoe fits, then we need to wear it. The more we seek our faults, and our own faults, and we blind to the faults of others, then the door of hidayat opens up. Bye bye, dear Rahmatullah, they used to say, ke apna kami pehchanne ka naam hidayat hai. Hidayat is what? To recognize your flaws. The more you recognize your flaws, the more you are hidayat after. You are eligible for hidayat. So, and there's a difference. We seek and spy on others to expose their faults. Sahaba hid away so that they were not exposed to anybody's faults. So this heart is supposed to be avarice and desirous for Islam, for reformation to find Allah. So when we are Haq, then we will strive towards Haq. We will gravitate to the person who's showing us Haq because we realize this person is a lantern, a guiding star, a light to my destination. And if this heart is not desirous of Akhirah, then this very statement we will find flaws with, the person making the statement will find flaws with, the organization connected to the person will find flaws with, and we will ridicule and mock them. So, and let us not mix and join in good and forbidding evil, that's a separate department on its own. Ulama haq ulama rabbaniyin, and in that situation personally, to enjoin good and forbid evil is a separate command and that's another department. We are not talking about that. So this heart is the markas. Abu Sulaiman Darani Rahmatullah say, إِذَا كَانَتِ الْآخِرَ فِي الْقَلْبِ جَاءَتِ الدُّنْيَا تُزَاهِمُهَا That when akhirat is in the heart, the dunya will come, it will push it, it will shove it, it will jolt it. فَإِذَا كَانَتِ الدُّنْيَا فِي الْقَلْبِ But when the dunya is in the heart, لم تزاعمها الآخرة آخرة will not have the power and the capacity to jolt it out why لأن الآخرة كريمة والدنيا لئيمة because آخرة is precious آخرة has got usuls and principles it is honored it is noble it is prized it is valuable والدنيا لئيمة but this dunya is valuous vile and it is reprehensible there's no value in dunya. There's no usul. So people who've got dunya in the arts also don't have this usul. They, they've become vile in front of people and they, they show adab and etiquettes which are very reprehensible. So a person can either have dunya in the heart or akhirat. The Shaykh Abu Al-Hakam used to say, الدنيا والآخر يجتمعان في القلب فأيهما غلب كان الآخر تبعا له that when the dunya and akhirat combined into the heart then whichever one is overpowering whichever one is dominant whichever one you entertain and you give preference to that will overpower and the other will follow and mimic and emulate. So we have a choice to decide if you want to give preference to dunya or pre preference to akhirah. That's why Malik bin Dirah used to say, بِقَدْرِ مَا تَحْزَنْ لِلدُّنْيَا يَخْرُجْ 
according to your distressed worry and anxiety for dunya well the concern for akhirat leave the heart so you must choose one of the two wa biqadri ma tahzan lil akhirah and according to your restlessness and uneasiness of akhirat does your engagement your desire your ambition for dunya decrease so we have to decide and how apt does it ali radiyallahu anhu used to say al dunya wal akhirah dharatan dunya and akhirat are like co-wives fa bi qadri ma tarda ihdahuma tasqat al ukhra according to you making one happy do you make the other unhappy and own uh, bin abdullah used to say al dunya wal akhirah fi al abd ka kafatay al mizan like the pins of a scale when you put weight on one the one goes down and the other one goes up so a person must decide am i a person of dunya or a person of akhirah in sahaba's hearts were so clean and pure that they never desired to even know nabi ali sallallahu alaihi wasallam said la yuballighuni ahadun min ashabi an ahadin shay'a please don't tell me any of the traits the flaws of any of my sahaba fa inni uhibbu an akhruja ilaykum wa ana salim as-sadr that i prefer to walk amongst you and my heart is clean once na ay sabi entered in biyari sam said the person is going to enter will be a jannati who comes to this door so as abdullah ibn salam came so sahaba inquired is any special trait he said inni la dhaif i don't have any qualities maybe wa in awthaq ma arju bihi la the 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 most i can tell you is that salamat as-sadr wa tark ma la ya'ni that my heart is clean i don't have any hatred malice towards anybody and i abstain from la ya'ni so one is the command of allah one is the awamir of allah which we need to make sure that comes alive in the um and one is this hatred and malice in the hearts as for the awamir when the quraish came with regards to the lady from makhzumiyah who stole and they asked who will speak to the nabi of allah so they said the only person that can do that is usama bin zaid is the beloved of the nabi of allah so they asked him to intercede so when he came to nabi alayhi salatu wassalam nabi alayhi salam was very very upset and he said atashfa'u fi haddin min hududillah if you come to intercede with regards to a matter which is connected to allah there's no compromise on the deen of allah thumma qama fakhtataba bi salam gave a khutbah a lecture he addressed the majma and he said inna ma ahlaka alladhina qablakum annahum kanu idha saraqa fihim al-sharif tarakuhu when a nobleman a person of high standing a wealthy person did wrong through bribery bribery corruption they inverted the rules and they let him go and a weak poor person did a wrong they applied the laws and justice then nabi ali salam took a qasam and he said law an fatima ibn muhammad saraqat la qata'tu yadaha o oh my sahaba if fatima the daughter of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam stole I also would have amputated cut her hands. So there is no compromise on the awamir of Allah. And we have to make a niyat that till our last breath we have to study deen till our last breath spend time with the ulama mushayikh because these are avenues that will identify and make one realize go out in the belief in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. otherwise a person will be making effort the entire life they won't even realize that they've been making the wrong effort and they will exhaust all avenues the entire life and not even realize that they wasted their life they said there was a blonde that walked past by a shop and she read the sign we don't sell to blondes in the window 
So she went inside to investigate, she was upset, how could they discriminate? So she put a test to the salesman and said, I'd like to buy this audio system. So the salesman said, sorry ma'am, we don't sell to blondes. So she was more shocked. How could they do this? So the next day she came, she had dyed her hair, brunette. And she said, excuse me sir, I'd like to buy this audio sound system. So he said, sorry ma'am, we don't sell to blondes. Now she became more irritated, more upset, more vexed. So she decided she's going to do something differently. So she changed her hair, she dyed her hair another color, she got a haircut and she came to the salesman and said, excuse me sir, I'd like to buy audio system. So again he said, sorry ma'am, we don't sell to blondes. Now she was even more furious, infuriated and she said, okay, now I'm going to sort him out. So she changed her hair color to black, she got a new haircut, she changed her outfit, she got plastic surgery, she did everything to look different. Now she returned and she said, excuse me sir, I'd like to buy the audio sound system. So again he said, sorry ma'am, we don't sell to blondes. So she started screaming and she became infuriated again. He said, how is it possible on earth, do you know that I'm a blonde? I look nothing like I did when I first came in here. I look nothing like I did when I first came in here. So he said, sorry ma'am, but that's a microwave. Sorry ma'am, but that's a microwave, not a audio sound system. So sometimes we spend our entire life trying to get something right, but we got something else wrong. So it shouldn't be that we make an effort our entire life and in the Qabr we found out that we got it wrong. Sometimes people make a statement they say there's no good people in the world. There's no good people in the world, did I look at myself first? So they just bind the heart to find haq. So we're looking at the wrong place. Nowadays also pranking has become common, it is, it's the order of the days, it's something that is in vogue. People are actually making money they become bloggers, they become YouTubers and the, the blogger and the spectator both take pleasure in seeing somebody else being harmed. So somebody is being harmed and we are taking pleasure and enjoyment out of that. So how dark must the hearts be? Whereas the taqaza of Iman is we wouldn't even want to see an animal being harmed. My brother Haq Rahmatullah once went to make wudu, he moved. Again he moved. So the murids asked him, Hazrat, that you move twice? Well, we haven't seen this normally. He said, we always making wudu, they were ants. I didn't want to cause them any taklif or inconvenience. So when the heart is connected to Allah, we won't want, want to cause any inconvenience. Forget the family of Allah, the, the creation of Allah, any creation of Allah. Otherwise, again, it's only looking at my benefit and my self and me. So if uh, we always looking at our own benefits, let's say somebody passes away. So it's difficult, I cannot get over it, it is hard. But did we ever cross our minds that what is the condition of this person in the grave? Okay, you still alive, you can still manage it. You got some difficulties of worldly problems. They've got problems of akhirat or not, that's the question. So much Quran khatams did I make for them, whether it's our own parents, whether it's our own brothers and sisters, our husbands. Did we make enough dua for them? Did we give enough sadaqa for them? So again, nafsi, the world is not being executed. Is the marhum suffering in the qabr? They did so much for us the entire life. The least I can do is do something for them while they're in the grave. So, so until we are not sacrificial, we can't be beneficial. Like a diamond should be ready to sacrifice itself, it ends up on the crown of the queen. And it, it polishes and it's shining, but the rough remains rough forever. So the truth may be cold and lies may be delicious. But we rather be ready for the truth and be protected than the lies and deceived. So it's difficult even to tell somebody anything, to be candid. I've got an issue with you, this is your problem. So 
Even ulama cannot speak nowadays. Mufti Zain Nabi Rahmatullahi say, Today we love all the sweet sunnah. So the scholar, the alim of deen must be speaking about all sweet things. He said, you must, we ask about the sunnah of Qailullah. We ask you, know, sunnah, before you eat after you must eat sweet meats. But the sunnah of sacrifice, the sunnah of tahajjud, the sunnah of fasting in the hot days, he said, that we don't want to know about. Mawlana, don't speak about too heavy stuff. The Majma is very light-hearted. Don't speak about uh, shaving the beard. Don't speak about wearing parda. Don't speak about television. Mawlana, you mustn't be too uh, narrow-minded and very rigid and strict. So, Deen is clear-cut. It's in black and white. It's just how we want to sugarcoat it. So, a person eventually gets so busy in dunya, he's got no time for himself, for his family, for akhirat. And that blindness makes him lose even the haqiqat and the reality of the, his dunya. He doesn't even benefit from his dunya anymore because he's in that thick veil of deception. He said there was a man who came home late, tired, and uh, his son was waiting for him at the door. So the son said, uh, Abba, may I ask you a question, Dad? He said, yeah, sure, no problem. He said, how much do you make an hour? So the father just came in now, he was tired. He said, that's not, not of your, nothing of your concern. Why are you asking me something like that? She said, no, I just want to ask. Please tell me, how much do you make an hour? So the father felt sorry. He said, if you need to know, I make $20 an hour. So the little boy said, uh, what is head looking down? Can I borrow $10? Now the father became more upset. He said, he's just asking me money because he wants more money. And I don't have time for this year. And why has he become so selfish? I work so hard every day. Now he wants to know how much I earn. And then he wants more money from me. So the, he became upset with the boy, so the boy in tears went back to his room and closed the door. So he had his supper and then he realized, hey, you know what, maybe the boy, my son, he needs something. So he went to the room, knocked on the door, he said, are you asleep? He said, no, I'm, I'm fine. Then he said, you know what, I think so, I was too hard to you, here's the ten dollars. So the boy got up and he smiled and he said, oh, thank you, dad. And he screamed with happiness. Then he reached under his pillow and there were notes that were crumpled. So the father became angry again. You asked me for money and yet you got money. So as he was shouting, the boy was counting the money. So he said, what do you want with money when you already have it? So the father upset said. So the boy replied. He said, I didn't have enough, but now I do. I've got $20. Can I buy one hour of your time? So tomorrow, can you please come home early? And I have supper with you, Dad. Can you please come home tomorrow early? And I have supper with you. When you forget Allah, then you forget yourself. Eventually, خَسِرَ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَ So, a person needs to check in this heart. So the advisors of Deen, the nasiyah that we are in is like an operating theater and shaitan doesn't want us to be in this theater. Theater is not about enjoying. Surgery is a difficult thing. It's an operation of the roh and the surgeon cannot make a mistake. So the nasai, the advisors are important to remove the tumors and the gangrene of sin and evil. And shaitan, the master magician is there to deceive us. Doesn't want us to listen to Deen, to go near to Deen. He said, two friends enter the bakery. As soon as they enter the bakery, the one friend steals three pastries, puts it in his pocket, and says to his friend, see how clever I am. Don't, uh, didn't see anything. I didn't even need to lie. So the other one says, this is typical dishonesty. You've displayed your entire life, trickery and deceit. I will show you the honest way with the same result. So he goes to the owner of the bakery and says, give me a pastry and I'll show you a magic trick. So the owner accepts and uh, he gives him a pastry, he said, give me another one, give me another one. He eats three pastries. So the owner starts getting worried and he's wondering, where's the magic trick? So he said, what did you do with the pastries? So he said, look in my friend's pocket, look in my friend's pocket. So Shaitan, the Jal will steal our Iman, we won't even know. Because when a person loves something, we'll attack it. If the talk of Deen, the advice of Deen, we'll attack it or disappear, stay far. But it's our own destruction. Look for a mufti that will give me the fatwa in the name of deen. So somebody 
as a co-worker at work so you know this lady i'm giving a dawah to allah or somebody uh, is a widow a young lady i need to go see to her needs or i built a big house mashallah so i can host masturat jamaat or this very expensive s class i bought was to take the buzruks around hey, you know what whenever the jamaat goes overseas tell me i'm ready i'll join the jamaat so we we basically tour us uh, hey, you know that khan ka there the chows mashallah the food is very good that's why i said hey, take off there so even our deen has become dunya our deen has become dunya may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the reality of akhirah the amal for today is that we should distance ourselves from fitna man in qata'a ila allah azza wa jalla kafa allah kullu allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will suffice for his every need and allah will give him this from where he cannot imagine whoever distances himself from sin and ma'siyat and runs to allah wa min qata'a ila dunya wakkalahu allah ilayha and whoever distances himself from allah and goes to dunya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will subjugate him and make him the slave of dunya wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin